Good morning. Uh, this morning we'll be looking in the book of Romans. The book of Romans chapter 8. Romans, New Testament, the book of Romans chapter 8. And we'll begin reading in verse number 28. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8 beginning in verse number 28. As you find your place there, I'll start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the day you've given us, Lord. Thank you that we're going to be in your word this morning. So, Father, I pray that you'll help us to put all distractions aside. And, Father, help us to focus entirely upon you. Father, pray that your spirit will move freely in our hearts and in our minds. And we'll pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 28. And it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. When shall we then say, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. <clears throat> Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. <clears throat> for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> I titled my sermon this morning, Conquered or Be Conquered. You know, verse 37, it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. See, this life we live <clears throat> is to be all to the glory of Jesus Christ. And as a child, again, a born-again, saved believer... It is important to understand that this life we have on this earth must be thought of as a means to be able to do what Christ wants us to do. And too many times a Christian will let the things of this world, things they deem responsibilities, weigh them down to the point where they kind of push the work of Christ that they have in their lives to the back burner. And the things of Christ for the Christian should always be of the utmost importance. Because I truly believe in this world that we live in right now, as a child of God, you're either going to be one of those that are, are going to be in the category of more than conquerors, or you're going to be in the category of being conquered. Because sometimes we let those, those responsibilities of the world push us so far down that we become useless for the work of Christ. When truly, if we can see how amazing Christ has been in our lives, how amazing God is in our lives, <clears throat> then we would make sure that his work is a priority. So as we look at this passage, I believe that we can draw motivation from things within this passage that will help us to be more than conquerors, that will help us to make sure that we keep his work in our lives of the utmost important things and, and to keep from pushing uh, his work to the back burner because if we do that, if we take his work and we kind of put it on the back burner, it's dangerous. Dangerous because, number one, the work of Christ is hindered. But secondly, it's dangerous because Satan is getting exactly what he wants from the believer's life. For us to be um, useless for the work of Christ. So, as we look at this passage, I want to show you things that might motivate us to keep his work of utmost importance in our lives. First of all, realize this, that we have to understand what is God's importance. What is important to God? Look at verse 28 through 31. It says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who could be against us? See, 
we have to, when we look at these verses, we have to understand who the them, the whom, and the us are. Because in these verses, it shows what is important to God. And, and to understand who the, the them, the whom, and the us for, you have to go back up to verse 28. And it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Them that love God. God. See, we see that God takes notice of those that love him. And no, and in turn, they become of great importance to him. To them that love God. And, and see, I, I think that's something that Christians have to come and, and really kind of grab a hold of and chew on to is understand your love toward Christ, your love toward God. Um. You know, I, I talk a lot about my marriage and kind of comparing it to the things of God because, you know, me and my wife had a very eye-opening, a very real discussion uh, a few years back. You see, it's very easy to say you love somebody, but it's a whole different thing to show somebody that you love them. I, I think a lot of people do the lip service, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, but it's really hard to do the action part of that love, to show them that you love them. And I think that there's a lot of Christians that get caught here. You know, they, they have a, a true love for Christ. They have a true love for God. And they, they'll tell them, hey, I love you, Christ. I love you, God. But somewhere along the way, they, they really don't put in action that love. Those actions that we as believers show toward God that we love him. And I, I believe that a great part of that is making sure that his work in us, his the work that we do for him, is of utmost importance in our lives. I'm not saying push away all the responsibilities that you have, your job, your your family, your children, on all those things. Don't push those, but at the same time, make making sure that his work is of the utmost importance in your life. Seeing that, that all these things here on this earth, they're just a means by which we can do the work of Christ even better in our lives. Um, turn with me to the book of Revelations. Keep your finger marked there, but look at Revelations chapter 2. Revelations chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. All the way to the back, the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelations chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. And, and God gives us a warning here about you know, leaving our first love. It says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. You know, he gives a warning for us leaving our first love because know it or not that when we come into the relationship that we have, when we become saved, when we become born again, when we enter into the family of God, that, that love that he has shown us that's really our first contact with, with this type of love. We can say we've been loved here on this earth, but we never understand what true love is until we have that relationship with Christ. And a warning he gives, he, he says he'll remove his candlestick. That's the light of testimony. You know, his light of testimony in our lives. And he says he'll, he's not going to take away our salvation, but we're going to lose that, that light, that, that freshness that that just amazingness that he he achieves in our lives when we show him how dedicated we are to him and see so the question is have you left your first love you know i uh last sunday announced to the people you know showing christ that he is of most importance in my life you know one of the things that a lot of people are distracted with are their phones. So I made the commitment this week. I said, look, I'm only going to use my phone for phone calls and to answer text messages 
and if I have to get an email every now and then. I'm not going to use it to look at news feeds or, or social media or anything like that. And the people that I'm around the most, I, I told them that. And I said, if you catch me on it doing something else, call me on it. And, you know, it was surprising how many times I just picked up my phone without thinking, go to a news feed or something like that, social media. And, you know, I'm thankful that I have strong people in my life because, hey, my wife called me on it. My wife, my, uh, my dad had to call me on it once and say, hey, I thought you weren't going to use your phone, but just to take phone calls and text messages. And I said, you know what, you're right. See, sometimes we have to realize the distractions that are in our lives before we can make sure that he is really of utmost importance in our life, that his work is of utmost importance, making sure that you know we, we cast our attention upon him and not upon other things. So if we want to be motivated to keep his work of utmost importance in our lives, first of all, realize what is important to God. We are. We are important to God. The great links that he went through to show us his salvation for us was amazing. So we are of utmost importance to God. Second thing that I believe in this passage that can help us going back to Romans chapter 8, I believe that can motivate us to keep his work of utmost importance in our lives to help us to be more than conquerors is understanding that secondly, who we answer to, who we as Christians answer answer to look at verse 32 now romans chapter 8 look at verse 32 it says he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things who shall lay anything to the charge of god's elect it is god that justifieth who is he that condemneth it is christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of god who also maketh intercession for us. You know, once you become a child of God, once you become a Christian, once you accept that free gift and you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, understand this, we answer to Christ. You know, verse 32 shows us that Christ was delivered up for us. He paid for our sins. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says that he would he was made sin for us and he knew no sin. But he was made sin for us. That means he took upon us, he took upon himself the sins of the world and he paid the price for our sins. He was delivered up for us. Verse 33, it says, uh, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who can accuse us rightly? You know, God pardoned us. He is the one who justly can. You know, the Bible says that that Satan is the accuser of the brethren, but really he doesn't have the right to accuse us. Only God is the one that can accuse us rightly. He pardoned us. He is the only one who justly can. He is the one we answer to. But then verse 34, still in Romans chapter 8, it says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Christ is alive again. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And guess what his priority is? To make intercession for us. For those that have accepted him and made him their personal Savior. He's making intercession for us. His focus is upon us. And in order for us to keep his work of utmost importance in our lives, we must see that we answer to the one who is willing to stand up for us. Because Satan's not willing to stand up for you. Christ is the only one that left the glories of heaven to come to this earth and to take your place upon the cross, to die for your sins. And because of that, does he not in turn deserve our focus upon him? You know, if we want to be more than conquerors through him, if we want to let his glory shine through in our lives, then number one, we have to realize that we are of importance to him, but also he's the one worthy of us answering to. He went through great lengths for us, and he's the one that we answer to. But still looking in Romans chapter 8, not only are we of utmost importance to God, not only is he the one deserving for us to answer to, but the third and last thing I want you to realize that can motivate us to become more than conquerors, to, that can motivate us to make sure his work of, is of great importance in our lives, 
is that when we realize that nothing can separate us from him. Nothing can separate us from God. Still looking in Romans chapter 8, look at verse 35 now. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, look at this part, that neither, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, nothing can separate us from God. And when we get to that point and we really understand how important that is to the life of a Christian, then I believe that's something that can motivate us to make sure that we stick close to Him, that we make sure that His work of His His work for us is of most importance in our life. See, God does not turn His back on you. God does not ignore you. God does not give you the silent treatment. God does not rescind His salvation when you become disobedient to Him. See, we as believers are secure in Him. See, there's a lot of verses. People want to say, well... You know, are once saved, always saved. Is that really the truth? It is. I mean, you look in the book of John chapter 10, and Jesus himself tells us that nothing can pluck us out of his hand. See, the Father gave him, gave us to him, so nobody can take us away from him. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says that we are sealed unto the day of redemption. It's not a, a temporary seal, it's an everlasting seal. And, and you know, I, I've... I kind of feel sorry for the people that believe that that salvation can be taken away because you know what? That's a salvation by works. And salvation is by grace alone. You know, you didn't do anything to earn it. God gave it to us freely. So therefore, if he gave it, he's the only one that, that can do something about it. And you know what? He promises us not to take it away. But so many times people think that salvation is something that they've done. So therefore, if they mess up, they can lose it. That's not what grace is. Grace is God looking at us, and despite our faults, He promises us to love us anyway. <clears throat> and then you go back to Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39 says it clearly. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor thing present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, part, next part is important, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, when we understand his long suffering toward us, when we understand his dedication toward us, when we understand his steadfastness toward us, it should motivate us to keep his work of utmost importance in our lives. And see, when we do that, we become more than conquerors through him. And see, what does it mean to be more than conquerors? You look at this world and you can see that there's great opposition to God. There's great opposition to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Satan and his forces are working hard to get people not to believe in Jesus. But the Bible tells us that we become more than conquerors. When we take his work and we, we make it a priority in our life, guess what? We can overcome that evil. We can overcome that evil pressure against the gospel. And we can overcome and make sure that people understand who Christ is and they, in turn, will accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. That's why we do, uh, I believe, in evangelism evangelism within the local church. That's why I believe in supporting missionaries that, that are overseas, that are you know in, in hard places, and they're willing to do the work of God, even despite the great opposition. So I want to ask you this morning, knowing that there are two, two categories for the Christian. Either we're going to be in the category of more than conquerors for Christ, or will you be in the category of conquered by the pressures of this world? Because your actions show, and I truly believe this, your actions show your level of commitment. See, if you're truly committed to Christ, 
then his work will be of great importance in your life. It will be at the forefront, not on the back burner. But if you look at your life and you can see that your love for him, it's still there, but you've let his work kind of wane off, kind of bleed off a little bit, kind of, you know, been placed on the back burner. Maybe it's time that you take his work, put it on the front burner, Step back into that category of, of being more than conquerors for him and through him and begin to see your level of commitment to him rise once again. Because I truly believe then and only then will we find everything that he has in store for us. The peace, the love, the joy, the, the hard work being paid off, souls being won to him, people being grown in the faith, churches you know, expanding and doing exactly His will. Will you be more than a conqueror or will you be conquered? Will you let the things of this world weigh you down or will you make sure that His work is of great importance in your life? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time we had in your word, Lord. Just pray that uh, whatever was read, whatever was said, Lord, may it just be a seed in our lives and may it grow. Father, I pray that you'll be glorified. We'll pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. I hope this finds you well. Uh, know that we are meeting uh, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. in church. Uh, we're being safe. We're praying for the ones that aren't able to be there. I know that there are some out sick right now, so um, keep praying for one another. Uh, praying that the Lord will keep us all safe. And then beginning in February, the second Wednesday night, uh, we'll have services, second Wednesday night. So not the first Wednesday, not the third Wednesday, but the second Wednesday of the month, we will have Wednesday night services at 6.30. Um, I'll keep on making these videos. I hope they're, they're helpful toward you. Thank you.